Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, just a show of hands. Who's in the insurance industry, actually? Just, I'm quite conscious that uh, some people are from banking and etc. Just to have an idea. Uh, raise of hands. Okay, sure. Um, today, I'm going to speak about specifically around um, digital insurance and the role it plays in the API economy. We've heard a lot of things uh, in the past two days. Uh, there's the great migration uh, across into API, and rightfully so. So, but what does it mean in the context of insurance specifically, and uh, why is that happening, right? And, and why is that so imperative? Uh, it's no different from any other industry, uh, and I will start to cover that. Yeah. Also wanted to give a shout out to Thomas uh, for sharing on the EXA di digital journey. I think that's a great transformation journey uh, that is still in play, still in progress. Um, but they are well ahead of quite a lot of, a lot of the other insurers, and I will um, speak a bit more about that as well. Yeah. So, let me... Okay, sure. All right. So, back to the digital imperative. As if I pull out some of the IDC research numbers, um, by 2021, at least 60% of Asia-Pacific uh, region GDP will be digitized. And that is huge, right? If you think about that um, migration or that movement, uh, that is a huge change. And insurance is not excluded. Uh, insurance, uh, from a digitization perspective, is also going to rapidly change. But this is very significant. The reason is because insurance really, from a business, hasn't really changed in the past 100 years in terms of its form and function. Uh, so this, uh, to insurance, is a big deal. Um, and if we look at a uh, broader context of Asia-Pacific region, uh, from an overall global growth, that contributes about 50%. So if you look at from a growth perspective, the momentum is all there. Um, also, if you look at the technology proofing and uh, what we call DX, uh, digital transformation, we are looking at numbers in the, in the region of 386 billion in 2018, uh, and that's already a 15 plus percent growth uh, from 2017. Yeah. So let me go further into the uh, specific insurance landscape. Mm -hmm. And share about the evolution of insurance technology um, over the years. Yeah. So really, uh, for companies, uh, believe it or not, there's still many companies out there running on COBOL. Uh, that was introduced in the 1960s. Uh, and uh, until today, that's still ongoing. And we call that, we borrowed a page out of the, uh, pretty much the telco uh, 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 nomenclature, and we said that's the 1G tech. Um, uh, fast forward around 1985, client server technology was introduced, certain players, uh, especially in the insurance space, went into that. Uh, but that was very short lived, uh, and that kind of fizzled out uh, by the 2000s uh, with the advent of the internet. Uh, and browser-based, what we call 3G technology, uh, surfaced uh, in year 2001, and that's still ongoing. Uh, but we are all in API days, and we know that the future is cloud. Uh, and that's where 4G came into play. Uh, but really what 4G to the insurance industry is, is bringing a set of foundational connectivity to the entire ecosystem. So if you look at it from that context, there's actually another narrative to be so-called uh, uh, written for 5G tech that's coming. Uh, you have all your AI, your blockchain. Ultimately, when that matures, that will all feed into the 4G tech foundation that's being built. Uh, so from uh, eBow's point of view, uh, 4G tech is all about building that foundation of connectivity. Uh, and then we will see why, therefore, APIs uh, become a very critical uh, cornerstone of that. If you quickly do a snapshot of the insurance landscape, just do a venture scanner, anything like that, any of these tools, you will see a populous amount of connectivity demands from new uh, insure tech startups, uh, fintech startups, you name it. Anyone related uh, who traditionally in the past was never involved in insurance now are looking at ways and, uh, to monetize their customer base from an insurance standpoint. And that's the exciting part that insurance has never experienced before. Yeah? So look at that. So just look at this particular venture scan I did. That's 982 companies. 
if 982 companies wanted to connect to a traditional insurer, how would that insurer react? Yeah? So hence why uh, Access Journey on an open API kind of a platform is very crucial. But what are the real challenges? Right? Uh, and, and we know it's not a rosy story. Right? Uh, unfortunately, most uh, systems out there, especially in financial services and specifically in insurance, no different. It's very monolithic. That is the problem. Uh, we allude to the fact that every connection that goes out of your organization almost becomes like a bamboo tree, right? Getting out. But that bamboo tree with more connections gets very messy. As a result, we call it that forest of bamboo, which becomes very hard to manage. Uh, and that's why, and that's just driving everybody to look at other ways to scale and grow. Uh, also performance, we know performance is very low. Uh, if, if you're running on COBOL systems, that's going to be a limitation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can't um, benefit from the multi-threading, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and obviously, 24 by seven availability, uh, a lot of the monolithic systems uh, had always, in a way, uh, the, 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 the nomenclature or the idea is always about best job. There's always a best job that runs at night, it runs the six hours, etc. So where does 24 by 7 go? Uh, time to market, um, that's tough because the monolithic structure uh, prevents you from making changes fast. Hence why everything's pointing to uh, that silver bullet around APIs. Uh, but that story is not so simple. Can you just create an API and basically forget about your monolith? Uh, as Jessica yesterday showed, that is a very um, intentional migration. And you have to be strategic about it. Exa has thought about it, and many companies are thinking about it, but how do we make that easier? Uh, and I'll share more about that as well. So the solution where everyone is moving to really is that two-speed architecture where effectively you have a high-speed middle uh, middle office uh, uh, where all your key transactional uh, for external connectivity or high volume transactions are happening. And then you, you have your uh, monolith at the back or your core which is handling uh, very mundane things or ultimately gets marginalized into a more uh, just data store type uh, repository. Yeah. So maybe I just touch a bit on the evolution of the insurance ecosystem as well from a connectivity uh, standpoint, and that will tie that all in on why this migration is happening. Yeah? Uh, before 2000, in the insurance industry, majority of things were paper-based. Yep. So as a result, there wasn't this demand. Yeah? Um, and you could do a lot with paper. Paper is great. And paper is not going to go away anytime soon. Um, but from 2000 onwards, there was a huge, what we call externalization drive. Every company was looking at externalization, uh, and as a result, that started to impact their core systems at the back, because all these connectivity demands required to be exposed out. Uh, but in 2015, the digital era went into high-speed gear, and that's where even the 2000 solutions couldn't keep up. And that's why everyone started to move. Yeah? Um, into a structure similar to this, moving their monolith to a more two-speed type architecture where effectively you have microservices. Uh, some haven't gone down that maturity model. Maybe they're still on an SOA type model, uh, but basically ultimately ending up in a microservices environment uh, where you can also mix and match third-party APIs, etc., uh, and all working in concert with all the business process. Right? So, so everyone's looking at this, but how uh, that journey is not easy. That journey is, um, I would say, uh, requires a lot of time, effort, and intentionality. Um, and you will see that we allude this to the electrical ele evolution. The electrical el evolution was basically when electricity was first discovered uh, and basically commercialized. Everyone was racing to do what? They were racing to connect connect basically the grid lines, get electricity into the house. Uh, we view this as what 4G technology or cloud technology 
and, and in the internet is doing. Uh, but effectively, what did electricity do? It actually birthed a lot of applications. You have the microwave oven, you have the dishwasher, all because there's electricity running in your home. This would not all be possible if that was not present. And likewise, we use that analogy uh, back to, uh, from an API perspective, if you do not have the fundamental connectivity with uh, each of your uh, stakeholders, your intermediaries, etc., uh, then where are all these fancy applications going to be created? It won't happen. So really, the basis of that foundation is connectivity. So what I wanted to share was what we've been doing around um, creating that connectivity through a publicly available microservices-based open, open API platform. Uh, it's quite a mouthful, uh, and we call it InsureMo. So it's a very specific set of APIs uh, around insurance domain uh, that is uh, readily available. So pre pretty much in the past, uh, everyone had to build these and figure out, uh, without that domain, how to build these difficult APIs around insurance. So what we've done is uh, to leapfrog that process by basically putting it from an, a public open API space uh, to make it publicly available. Yep. So typically, in, when an organization wants to adopt APIs, they have a couple of decisions, and the normal decision will be either to buy, build, or consume. This would be the three tenants around API consumption. Um, Buying could be buying a, a, a new uh, replacement uh, or uh, putting in an entirely new technology architecture into the environment or building out what we call that middle office uh, using SOA, ESB, etc. Uh, and building each API out, uh, but all that takes a lot of time. Uh, or leapfrog by basically consuming APIs that are readily available. Uh, the difficulty in the past was these APIs were not readily available. So, but uh, with the uh, open API, um, with what, what uh, Cloud Native uh, Foundation has done, um, a lot of things have allowed this to happen. So in 2016, eBao actually did a joint venture uh, with Alibaba. Uh, and we opened out the very first cloud-based open API platform service to the industry in China uh, in 2016. Um, fast forward two years down the road, um, the, the adoption rate has pretty much baffled us in terms of uh, the acceptance in the market. Uh, today, we have about 1,000 insurance products configured on that cloud platform. We have about 30,000 uh, policies sold uh, per day. Uh, millions of API calls are now being transacted uh, on the platform. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. In the past, I would have customers coming up to me and, and they would say, I've reached my first uh, one million issuance of a policy. I said, that's really great. Uh, but just maybe two months ago, I had a client from Sri Lanka. He called me up and said, look, we just hit 12 million API calls today. I, I said, well, I, I'm glad to hear that because now the conversation is changing. It's changing to API calls. It's not even about policies anymore. Um, we now have 300 channels connected, so I'll spend some time talking about the specific use case. I mean, it's great to, to hear the numbers, um, but that's just the start. I mean, just imagine, this is a two-year-old service. We are all on this learning journey together from an API perspective. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, and we have about 100 insurers already signed up on the back end. Okay. What does it look like, this open API platform? Um, well, it's fully dockerized, powered by Kubernetes, uh, and effectively, these are all the entity uh, uh, API sets that we have made available, uh, and pretty much that gives everyone a starting block. Uh, so if you think about it, if you are a new startup thinking about getting into insurance transactional services uh, to uh, power one part of your business model, all this becomes immediately available. You don't have to figure out too much. Uh, for an existing insurer who is uh, looking at that transformation journey as well, this good, gives a very good starting block. And the beauty of the open API platform is it doesn't pigeon you hold to one proprietary platform. Or, so you can mix and match. You could use these APIs, you could use a bunch of other APIs all orchestrated together. 
we took a lot of uh, care and time as well to make this platform as open as possible. So therefore, we're fully certified by the Cloud Native uh, Foundation to actually uh, certify the cloud platform, eBow Cloud, onto the Kubernetes and Dockerization as well. Yeah. Um, Insure more. Uh, one use case that a lot of the insurers do is basically put this as that middle office. So effectively, uh, as you saw in uh, the AXA digital journey, basically there is a middle kind of office play where you're slowly migrating more and more of your transactional services from your backends to this middle tier. Uh, or, and we view that as uh, an internal API platform that is externalized. Right? So, so really, that is what a lot of the insurers do. Uh, and they could take our public API platform and basically uh, use and leverage that and then start to enhance that further beyond that. Yeah. Um, so we already have about 30 insurers now uh, doing this kind of format. Uh, and it gives them a great start, especially for countries where um, this level of technology hasn't really reached home or the talent base hasn't grown, this is a great uh, push up for them. Yeah? And it gives them exposure. I think for us, especially in this day and age now, it's all about exposure, exposing the enterprise to this digital journey and to APIs. And, and we learn along the way. So how, how do you actually start if you don't actually try? Um, another interesting use case would be the car dealers and car makers. So in China, actually, in the past, every insurer would sell a lot of policies. Where we're talking about one um, mega car dealer could sell a million cars in China a year. Right? Uh, that's more than uh, pretty much all the cars in Singapore. Uh, but one dealer could sell a million cars. And all the insurers would be using paper-based systems to just get that transaction through. And then later on, they quickly moved uh, to dedicated insurer point-to-point -point system. So you had all these car dealers working uh, specifically on each individual insurer system. Uh, but over time, as digital adoption came into China in full force, all these dealers wised up and said, we don't want any of this anymore. We just want one place, get everything done, get the best code, get it up. And hence why um, Im um, immediately we were very fortunate um, when we announced the JV with um, Alibaba, uh, China Grand Auto actually said, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Would you be willing to uh, allow us to use your open API platform to effectively uh, link up with all the insurance partners that we have? and run our entire business on the platform. Um, and that basically is contributing about a million car uh, policies per year uh, with a premium over a billion US. Right? So immediately once China Grand Auto went online, um, the number two player, uh, Chongshen, basically knocked on our door and said, we want to do the same. It's a natural knock-on effect. And, but that's great because that's proving again the API economy is all about connectivity. We are connecting all the various channel partners, all the various insurers, and anyone in the value chain into this connected neutral system yeah. uh, from that perspective. Uh, and it's been great. Um, I, effectively, now we already have 10 car dealers, 10 of the major car dealers on the platform. Uh, Gilly, who owns Volvo, has also just uh, basically approached us to onboard uh, 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 as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Uh, and we'll soon announce that basically Porsche will be on the platform as well. So we are seeing whether we can get some discounts in the account. Um, the other um, use case I wanted to share, because quite a few of the use cases are around uh, general uh, or PNC, uh, was the live side. So in China, the live uh, uh, independent brokers are a very large growth area. Uh, and basically, uh, they were dealing with many multiple insurers to get their quotations. It's a very simple problem, actually. Uh, a particular agent could represent, uh, unlike in Singapore, they, can't, I, they can only represent one, two, or three, uh, or few. Uh, in in, in uh, China, there's a large uh, amount of representation that can happen. Uh, as a result, um, we got about 60 of these independent brokers 
coming to us and says, we'll use that same platform because at the end of the day, if you have 100 insurers connected on the back end, of which about 30 are all life insurers, for example, uh, that makes our entire life easier. I don't have to connect to each one, one by one. Yep. So immediately it reduced the entire friction cost and that totally disappeared. Okay. Another example is um, as a result of bringing this to the enterprise, actually we started to get a lot of inquiries from the insure tech startups because again, generally the insure tech startups do not have that level of domain around the insurance transactions unlike an insurer. Uh, but as a result, they see this value in the open API platform that, that encapsulates a lot of those business rules and logics uh, around that domain. So again, it's helping reduce the friction of access. And that's great. And that's the whole idea of the API economy. Um, we have uh, an example is Goyo. Goyo is again um, a fitness band. Uh, but they are very interesting because they actually not only take the data, but they feed that data to the insurer to give discounts to uh, the customer. If he walked a thousand steps today, then his premium the next day the, 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 uh, will be adjusted accordingly. So that's a, a very interesting use case. Uh, Moonshot is actually um, a company in, uh, in France uh, sponsored by uh, Society General, and they actually are trying to fit into the rail network. So their vision ultimately is that when you walk through uh, the rail systems, you're actually being insured by trip automatically. And they will try to work and embed that insurance with the ticket sales. So it becomes seamless. And that's the whole idea of an open API. You shouldn't need to figure out how to get that going. It should just be readily available to consume. Um, yeah, and, and the list goes on. And, and when, when I'm excited about this part, uh, and, and we'll be glad, um, feel free, any of you who uh, are running something like this where you would want to explore our platform, we'll be most ready to uh, speak with you and, and see how we can help on that area. Yeah? Um, we reached a historical milestone on the 18th of January. Um, it's not publicly well known, but basically China Continent is the number five uh, general insurer in China. And they embarked on an ambitious journey with Ebao uh, to say that they would actually lock, stock, and barrel migrate their entire business transaction systems to insure more, uh, basically within a two-year period, a very aggressive timeline. Considering their scale and size, they are a 6.2 billion premium uh, entity. Um, we actually initially, in our initial meetings, thought they were crazy to undertake a two-year aggressive program. Um, the result, though, has also surprised us, basically. After two years, we now have 2,000 APIs. So just imagine the DevOps around that uh, uh, distributed system um, to support all the business transactions and the connections and the channel points that's going on in China continent. The immediate result um, after a couple of months of running that platform in China, um, we're seeing maybe around five times faster product launches. Uh, to be fair, one month is pretty long. Uh, uh, I mean, those in banking, you'll be wondering why does it take so long to launch a new product? Uh, but in the reality, in, in insurance, there are far more complications related to that. Um, and they're starting to see the benefits of this new architecture and the open API platform. Channel connections have drastically reduced because, again, everything is pre-connected. Uh, or if it's not pre-connected, it's just that integration or that open API point is already available to easily consume. Uh, new business line development, that's the most interesting thing we've seen. That has also drastically dropped in terms of its rollout, simply because a lot of the things that one had to figure out to get that business to go live, to get the partners in place and align the marketing and everything else, that's all going away because basically they're all consuming the APIs very readily. Um, so that is what I thought I'd share. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I will end off with this quote for everyone. Um, keep creating. Right? We are now at the tip of the iceberg. You saw Exa's journey. They are at about 100 plus APIs. Um, I've, I've shown you a case where someone has gone to 2,000 APIs. 
That's still just touching the tip of the iceberg. So keep creating. As Einstein said, that's contagious. And we look forward to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Augustine. That was inspiring. Yeah. Questions from the audience? Any question at the back? I've got one, Augustine, for you. Sure, all right. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of disrupt disruption right, in open right. insurance. Would you say that we are at the start of a golden age for uh, open insurance? Sure. Um, I would immediately say yes, absolutely. Um, as I alluded to before, Insurance hasn't been disrupted in this kind of way for 100 years. So just imagine the possibilities. Just imagine, I mean, we always complain, right, that insurance uh, industry is a bit of a laggard with the banking industry. That's commonly known. But reality is, if you start to see the potential, because there's rest regulation on insurance, their ability to adopt, scale, and grow, and connect will be far faster, I would almost imagine, once this imperative becomes real to them to move than even banking because everything will start to change so rapidly yeah and as you've seen the knock-on effect is so rapid the minute once one of the person in the fold moves the rest will start to follow because they're just all playing catch-up and we, we do know that that's why everyone's in api a days because we're all still playing catch-up we're always learning the great newest thing and we're always playing second catch-up Thank you, Augustine. Big yeah. round of applause for Augustine. Thank you.